Start the video recording now. Hello, video listeners. This is the start of news with Nick. Oops. Let's take this off the screen. Um, the Nick's heat is no longer being fixed because it is fixed. But I'm not in show. I like like holy crap. You wake up and you're like, the show, uh, the heat, <laughs> the show's not blowing. The heat's not blowing. But I'm supposed to be doing a show. Um, and it's like, well, now I can't, right? I can uh, call the guy and then I can wait for him to come and then try to do a show or I need to delay the show. So I need to delay the show an hour and 40 minutes. Real annoying. But we are all set now and we will be jumping right into the news. Hopefully I pick up the mood here because, uh, ooh, real annoying because that's going to cost me like 350 400 bucks. Grannies. Oops, let's get this guy off the screen. We'll be hear hearing, hearing about this nice uh, black man later. He is probably the nicest man I've ever seen, and we will be getting to him. So stay tuned to hear about the nice black man. And if you are on the video, if you are on the podcast version, head on over to pukingthegang.com with your PCL account. Log in, click into the show, watch the video version of the show, and you will be able to see much more stuff going on up in the thing. And behind me, you can see my pile of clothes that looks like... It looks like a mess, but it's really just a bunch of clean clothes thrown on top of a thing, which is a mess. Let's see if we've got any live chatters. No. Okay. Coolio. All right. Uh, sorry. U.S. Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia found dead at West Texas Ranch. Associate Justice Scalia was found... Associate Justice Antonin... Scalia was found dead of apparent natural causes Saturday on a luxury resort in West Texas. Scalia, who was 79, was a guest at the Kibolo Greek Creek, not Greek Ranch, Creek Ranch, Kibolo Creek Ranch, a resort in the Big Bend region south of Marfa. <laughs> Whatever. He arrived at the ranch on Friday, attended a private party with about 40 people that night. He left the party and retired to bed earlier than others, according to Donna Sellers. When he failed to appear for breakfast, a person involved with the ranch went to his room where he discovered his body. A priest was called to administer last rites. A federal official, who was asked not to be named, said there was no evidence of foul play and said it appeared Scalia died of natural causes. Okay, so everyone's like, meh, pretty boring. 79-year-old got, uh, got dead. <laughs> And he's got to be replaced now. Which, by the way, now the Republicans are like, um, the Republicans are like, don't let Obama grant a, a, a Supreme Court justice. We should wait for the American people to choose a new president, and then they can grant a Supreme Court justice. And Obama's like, um, I'm pretty sure that the Constitution that you Republicans like to follow says that, um... The president appoints a new Supreme Justice. And he's right. But then the Republicans are like, but it's never happened for 86 years that we've done one in an election year. Oh, well. Don't know what to tell you. I think Obama's in the right. Um, okay, so let's... Uh, so that was pretty boring, but is it is it so boring? Or is there something foul at play? The sudden death of a senior associate justice of the Supreme Court and what some see as the bizarre handling of it afterward are leaving lingering questions. After Justice Antonin Scalia was found dead in this room at a Texas ranch on Saturday, it reportedly took hours to find someone to pronounce him dead. Finally, when local Texas judge Cinderella Guevara said Justice Scalia died of natural causes, she did it by telephone without seeing the body. And Crazy! So you need someone to pronounce a person dead. So they are like, uh, well, we're at this resort. We can't find anyone. A, why couldn't you find anyone to, like, take care of the biggest person on earth <laughs> dying in that day? Without ordering an autopsy. Um, and she's like, <laughs> she's all on the phone. She's like, does he look dead? Yes. Punch him. <laughs> we punched him. He didn't wake up. Okay, he's dead. I'll sign the order. That's allowed under Texas law. Judge Guevara told the Washington Post she made her determination only after talking to investigators on the scene who said they saw nothing suspicious. And tonight, a U.S. law enforcement source tells CNN there were no signs of foul play. Still, some are critical given Scalia's high profile. 
Well, I don't think they very. I don't know. So here's the thing. Here's what's going on. Um. Oh crap! Do I not have the link up right here? Questions are being raised by the death of Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia after the revelation that the medical examiner who pronounced him dead of natural causes never examined the body. Okay, I'm going to play this video uh, for a second for you because I do need to pull up another article. A good job was done with the death investigation. Former Washington, D.C. homicide commander William Ritchie believes Justice Scalia did die of natural causes, but he says Judge Guevara or a medical examiner should have been there in person to pronounce Justice Scalia dead. And he says there were things investigators should have looked for at the scene. Did they look for uh, signs of a particular hemorrhage in the eyes and, and in the lips and smelling the breath for any uh, unusual type of odor, uh, removing uh, the underclothing to see whether there was, you know, any trauma in Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. Antonin Scalia's sudden death over the weekend at a West Texas ranch raised questions about the nature of his travel, who paid for his trip, and whether justices are subject to the same disclosure guidelines as other judges or federal officials. Scalia was at the Cibolo Creek Ranch, a resort tucked away in the Big Bend region of Texas, about 30 miles. Who cares? Which raises the question, who pays for a Supreme Court justice to make this kind of trip? Not Scalia, it turns out. Poindexter, some guy's named Poindexter in this story. Uh, Poindexter told the Washington Post that Scalia was not charged for his stay, something he described as policy for all guests at the ranch. I did not pay for justices, the justices' trip to the Cibolo Creek Ranch, Poindexter wrote in a brief email Tuesday. He was an invited guest along with a friend, just like 35 others. Poindexter said he did not pay for Scalia's charter flight to Texas, a person familiar with the ranch's operations said Poindexter hosts such events two or three times a year. So he was having a uh, get-together of all the famouses and the justices on the Valentine's Day weekend, and then Scalia brought a friend, right? But they didn't say who. Uh, Poindexter, who would not identify Scalia's friend as a Texas native and blah, 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 blah. Um, so it's looking like we definitely have a conspiracy on our hands. We've definitely got Scalia, took a hooker up to that room, and they were like, Hooker, we're going to need you to kill him or give him a heart attack or something. So she's like, okay, <laughs> please have a heart attack. And he did. And now we've got a whole mix-up. So uh, this is this is what happens when you're a justice and you go to a Texas ranch. Don't do that. Scalia, Goner, uh, looking for a replacement. I don't know what they do until then. Like, what the court can't, um, the Supreme Court can't pause, right? Does the Supreme Court work with eight justices? Uh, Branch has been okay before with only eight justices. SCOTUS, which is, uh, so people like to say these cool words. POTUS is the president. SCOTUS is the Supreme Court. Um, and SCROTA, <laughs> nah, I don't know. SCOTUS has managed to function effectively at least at less than full strength for two extended periods in the last 50 years. Okay, so it seems like they've been able to, to do it with eight. So I guess we'll just do that for a while. Next story. Apple. Rejects order to unlock gunman's phone. You guys probably heard about this all over the place. I'll try to, I'll, um, but that's news with Nick. But I'll try to fill you in. If you haven't heard about this or haven't gotten all the details, you've probably been on Facebook. It's like, oh, yeah, yay Apple or boo Apple <laughs> or something like that. <clears throat> Apple will contest a court order to help FBI investigators access data on the phone belonging to San Bernardino gunman Saeed Rizwan Farouk. Remember when we did uh, Saeed and Hashba or whatever? I keep opening that screen, and I don't want to because I don't want you guys to read my email, even though there's nothing in there but GoDaddy receipts. A. Harvey in the chat. How's it going, A. Harvey? Um, okay. In a statement, Apple Chief, Chief Executive Tim Cook said that the United States government has demanded that Apple take an unprecedented step which threatens the security of its customers. 
We oppose this order, which has implications far beyond the legal case at hand. So let's go ahead and we will uh, take a look at the actual order, if I can find it. It is right here. I don't know why it wasn't open. A message to our customers. Apple writes on its website, The United States government has demanded that Apple take an unprecedented step which threatens the security of our customers. We oppose this order, which has implications far beyond the legal case at hand. This moment calls for public discussion. We want our customers and people around the country to understand what is at stake. Smartphones, this is long as heck. Okay, so I'm going to start uh, skimming. Smartphones led by iPhone have become an essential part of our lives. People use them to store an incredible amount of personal information. Blah, 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 blah. All that information needs to be protected from hackers and criminals who want to access it, steal it, and use it without our knowledge or permission. Compromising the security of our personal information can ultimately put our personal safety at risk. That is why encryption has become so important to all of us. Um, when the FBI has requested data that's in our possession, I am skipping around to get the bullet points. So if you guys go and read this at uh, apple.com slash customer dash letter, you can uh, read the whole thing. When the FBI has requested data that's in our possession, we have provided it. Apple complies with valid subpoenas and search warrants, as we have in the San Bernardino case. We have also made Apple engineers available to advise the FBI, and we've offered our best ideas on a number of investigative options at their disposal. So everyone's like, Apple's the best. Apple's the best. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I mean, they are. what are you supposed to do? Like, the FBI comes, and they're like, um, please give us information. What are you going to do? No? Yeah, so Apple helps the FBI and the government a lot. They're not anti-government, and they're not anti-FBI. Sure, they've taken a stand here, which we will get to shortly. But now, the U.S. government has asked for something we simply do not have and something we consider too dangerous to create. They have asked us to build a backdoor to the iPhone. Specifically, the FBI wants us to make a new version of the iPhone operating system, circumventing several important security features installed on the iPhone recovered during the investigation in the wrong hands. This software, which does not exist today, would have the potential to unlock any iPhone in someone's physical possession. The FBI may use different words to describe this tool, but make no mistake, building a version of iOS that bypasses security in this way would undeniably create a backdoor. And while the government may argue that its use would be limited to this case, there is no way to guarantee such control. So what happened? The government's like, hey, Apple. <laughs> I almost said Apple. Apple, hey, Apple, please help us uh, get this information off the phone. And they're like, um, can't, it's encrypted. It's like, come on, can't. So the government goes, okay, we're going to the court. The court, they say, hey, court, please tell Apple to get this stuff off the phone. And the court, because it's just an old man, like, what does he know? He's like, I don't know. I have a dial-up phone at home. It has a rotary. How hard is it to get information off it? <laughs> So he goes, okay, I agree with the government. Apple, you must help the government get the data. And Apple goes, well, Apple's response is this letter. Some would argue that building a backdoor for just one iPhone is a simple, clean-cut solution, but it ignores both the basics of digital security and the significance of what the government is demanding in this case. So you've got people sitting on judge robes, and they have no idea about security. I don't have any idea about iPhone security. They don't have any idea about iPhone security. They just say, you work for iPhone or Apple. You're a wizard. Um, so you must be able to just magically, in two seconds, be able to hack the phone. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. The government suggests that this tool could, would only be used once on one phone, but that's simply not true. Once created, this technique could be used over and over again on any number of devices. So maybe we should trust what Apple's saying about how often the hack could be used versus what the government's saying is like, no, it couldn't be. I'm the government. <laughs> um, ba -ba -ba. The government would have us remove security features and add new capabilities to the operating system, allowing a passcode to be input electronically. This would make it easier to unlock the iPhone by brute force, trying thousands or millions of combinations at the, the speed of a modern computer. So basically, what's happened is the iPhone that these terrorists had, okay, 
Uh, it's not even their iPhone. Um, I mean, you call them terrorists. I call them. <laughs> I also call them terrorists, let's say. Like, they're a shooter, right? They might not be a terrorist. They were a shooter. Any shooter uh, that inflicts terror is a terrorist, right? It's like, if you're a Muslim and you're a shooter, you're a terrorist. If you're white and you're a shooter, you're, like, depressed or something. I don't know. So anyway, the point is, they had this iPhone that was actually company issued and the company itself has said yeah go ahead and hack the iphone but the guy who got the issued phone put a encryption on it and a passcode and you may be thinking nick i thought that the other day on a break show you were talking about phone encryption and how it doesn't really exist but clearly i don't know what i was talking about um i thought that there was always i thought that there was always like a workaround like no matter what you couldn't lock it all the way so that no one could get to it apparently that's not true Apparently, you can lock it all the way, and no one can get to it. So they put this passcode on it, and if you try the passcode a certain number of times, it goes, someone's trying to hack the phone, um, or what's called brute force it, meaning you try every combination. So they say, okay, someone's trying to hack it. Let's delete everything. <laughs> so the phone just deletes everything. So the FBI knows this, and they won't be able to try more than, like, 10 passcodes before it deletes it. The other option is that instead of deleting it, it just puts in a longer and longer delay. So you mess up once, you got to wait 10 seconds. You mess up twice, you got to wait 20 seconds. You mess up three times, you got to wait 40 seconds. Blah, 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 until you're waiting like five days between each try, which is not sustainable. You can't do that. Um, and then be able to brute force the phone. So what they're asking Apple to do is go, Apple, please write, recompile your operating system, but take out the thing that makes it erase or makes the delay happen and then we can just try every combination and apple says no we don't want to <sighs> justice department files a new response rather than assist the effort to fully investigate a deadly terrorist attack by obeying this court's order on february 16th 2016 apple has responded by publicly repudiating that order Apple has attempted to design and market its products to allow technology, rather than the law, to control access to data which has been found by this court to be warranted for an important investigation. I'm sp speaking in a mad government lawyer voice. Despite its efforts, Apple nonetheless retains the technical ability to comply with the order and so should be required to obey it. Before Saeed and his wife, Tashfeen, shot and killed 14 people and injured 22 others, Farouk's employer issued him an iPhone. The federal FBI recovered that iPhone during its investigation. The government has reason to believe that Farouk used the iPhone to communicate with some of the very people whom he and Malik murdered. The phone may contain a critical communication and data prior to and around the times of the shooting. That thus far, A, has not been accessed, B, may reside solely on this phone, and 3, cannot be accessed by any other means other than the, th the help of Apple. Uh, the FBI continued to warrant, uh, con obtained a warrant to search the iPhone when the owner of the iPhone gave consent, uh, but Apple has been asked, or sorry, let's see, blah, 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 blah. The government subsequently sought Apple's help in its efforts to execute a lawfully issued search warrant, and Apple refused. Apple left the government with no option other than to apply to this court for the order issued February 16, 2016. Are you guys bored? This is pretty freaking boring. Um, so the point is, the government's responded, so it's going back to court, and the court's going to have to rule again. Um, it calls out, in the past, Apple's cons consistently co um, complied with significant number of orders issued Blah, blah, blah. So Apple has once in its history gone, nah, not helping. Can't. Security. Which is true. Like, if, you, if you're a judge and you don't know what you're talking about, <sighs> um, I don't know. <laughs> what, what would it be like? It'd be like, hey, can you please issue us a key that starts every person's car? Or maybe even, can you issue us, like, the access to get everyone's gps data or something at all times we won't use it for anything bad we're only gonna use it once please so i don't know <coughs> um this is breaking today though we actually have a uh an update to this 
in that the San Bernardino shooter's iCloud password was changed while iPhone was in government possession. The Justice Department acknowledged in a court filing um, that the password on Saik's iCloud account had been reset. <laughs> the filing states the owner, which was the employer, the San Bernardino County Department of Public Health, in an attempt to gain access to some of the information, was able to reset the password remotely, but that had the effect of eliminating the possibility of an auto backup. So someone... After the phone was... Er well, hang on. This is what the government's claiming. We don't know if this is true. Uh, someone at the IT department of who issued the iPhone, after it had been recovered, sent a password reset command to the uh, iCloud account, apparently, which means that now the phone, which otherwise may have been able to be set to back up to the iCloud and then that could be accessed, now couldn't do that anymore. Um... Did that truly happen, or, as the conspiracy theorists say, did the government reset the password so that they would be further locked out? Now, if they had a way in, they'd be like, "Oh, okay, we got our we got our way in. Um, we don't have to uh, ask, ask Apple to write a hack." But if they lock themselves out even further, they're like, "Apple, you must create a hack." So we're hacks. I don't know, but here's what Donald Trump has to say about it. Um, Donald Trump, man, he is, he's getting worse and worse every day, and I'm very sorry. I mean, I almost didn't vote for him because he was so bad. <laughs> Are you still streaming? Okay, good. So he's getting dumber and dumber every time he talks. But he just makes stuff up. Remember when, <laughs> during um, the Starbucks debacle, I don't know you guys remember this, they issued red cups rather than cups with, uh, like, Jesus dying on the cross or something on it, and then everyone got all upset. And during a speech, Trump just, he just makes stuff up. In the middle of the speech, he's like, you know what, Starbucks? I can't believe they're doing this. We should probably boycott him. I have a, I have a Starbucks in my, um, in my Trump Tower. I'll boycott him. I don't even care. I don't care. So, <laughs> so listen to this. He's in the middle of a speech. He's talking about jobs going overseas. Uh, and Apple is one of the companies, obviously, that sends jobs overseas. So he's talking about jobs going overseas, and we have to bring them back. We're getting stripped of all the jobs. we got to bring them back. And so in the middle of his speech, he decides that he's thought of the best idea. Oopsies. Darn it. All right, that's fine. I know where it was. Thousands and thousands of plants and factories closed, and we've rebuilt China. We've got to bring them back. We're going to bring them back. And I'm saying I want Apple. First of all, Apple ought to give the security for that phone. Okay? What I think you ought uh, so he's uh, he's in the middle of speaking about overseas jobs, and then all of a sudden he's like, oh, by the way, I think Apple needs to give security for that phone, right, everyone? Clap, clap. That wasn't a very loud clap, by the way. Although most Republicans are on the side of the FBI, as they normally are. They, Everyone who's saying that Apple is, is they're helping the terrorists, right? Uh, we need to stop the Muslims. We need to stop the terrorists, and we need to kill them all. So most most Republicans talk show hosts are not on Apple's side. But let's uh, let's watch Trump again. Well, Apple ought to give the security for that phone. Okay. What I think you ought to do is boycott Apple until such time as they give that security number. How do you like? That? I just thought it. Boycott. <laughs> this is the funniest part of the speech. He's like, you know what? I think we need to boycott Apple. I just thought of it. I just thought of it while I was talking. <laughs> That's what he does. He just thinks of something while he's talking and just yells it out. What to do is boycott Apple until such time as they give that security number. How do you like that? I just thought. By the way, he thinks that the security is just a security number. He's like, we got the number over here. It's 5522. <laughs> and we're not giving it out. Oops, we just gave it out. We just gave it out. We just gave it out. <laughs> Uh, it's not a security number, right? <laughs> you're talking about uh, you're talking about needing to have developers develop something, and they don't want to. Boycott Apple. Here's the thing. First of all, the phone's not even owned by this young thug that killed all these people. The phone's owned by the government. Okay, not even his phone. We don't even have to go that far. But Tim Cook is looking to do a big number, probably to show how liberal he is. But <laughs> Apple should give up. They should get the security. You'll find other people. When these he is a big gay, right? Well, he's not a big gay. He's a skinny gay. Two young people had bombs all over their apartment on the floor. Other people saw those bombs. 
Well, those people, in a certain way, are almost as guilty as the ones that did the shooting. We got I don't know. He's off on a tangent. So what he's saying, and of course what all the Republicans are saying, terrorist, 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 ter <laughs> hack the iPhone. Um, and I'm telling you, it's very scary. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't try to just be on a side because, oh, that seems like the right side. But if you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you're gonna break laws, if you're gonna have laws and have rules and have security, you can't just, you can't just push those aside, um, because terrorists, because that just encourages people to claim terrorist at all times. The worst case of this was in Boston when. Obviously, that little kid bomber ran around. He's like, I'm free. I'm free. Oh, got a boat. I'm going to hide in this thing. Uh, and then they searched every house, house to house, literally. Went inside people's houses. And there were very few examples of anyone being able to successfully keep the government, or even trying, really, to keep the government out of their house. But you can't. You can't just claim terrorism and go house to house and search houses. That's It's impossible. But that's what they were doing. They shut down the streets. They searched house. Like, if you were out on the streets, they were uh, questioning you. And if, if you weren't a nurse, <laughs> you were, uh, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Probably nothing. But they were trying to make you feel like something would happen. Anyway, that's Trump's stance on the Apple iPhone. And we will see how that shakes up in the coming days. Uh, it could be interesting. And it's a... Uh, Apple's not like some hero, right? <laughs> Apple's not the hero. They're just happened to be on the side of security here, which gives us a great example of what happens when these judges take over and say, you do something, right? The other day, they were like, Nick, we need to sell this printer. Put, Just plug in. By the way, I hate my job. <laughs> I don't hate my job. But if anything has a screen, a plug, an on switch... Uses a mouse, uses a keyboard, Nick it automatically has to know 100% of the things about it. Nick, we want to implement a live chat system. Can you recommend one, install it, and have it running by, like, Wednesday? Like, I don't know. No? Why is that my... Why can't anyone else use a computer? Nick, we sold a printer, but we need to install the cutter to it. Well, I'm not the person that installs the cutter. There's another guy that installs the cutter. Well, he's out. Can you just install the cutter? Probably, if I look at the instructions, just like you could install a cutter if we look at the instructions. A. Harvey says, wow, Donald Trump is dumb. If A. Harvey's calling you dumb, you got some problems. He is dumb. It's pissing me off. He says, he just says crazy things. Um, I mean, he won New Hampshire, thanks to my votes. He's going to win South Carolina today, possibly. He's still, which, the other thing, I like, <laughs> he's going to win South Carolina probably he's gonna win two states in a row and everyone is still saying there's no way donald trump's getting the nomination he's not gonna be nominated he's not gonna be president nobody has come out on the news and said you know i think donald trump actually has a chance they're saying he's a joke he's not but what joke in the history of politics have have won two states the two two of the three first states um I'm not saying he's. I'm not saying that if you win two or three states, you automatically win. But what joke candidate? It's not like. <laughs> it's not like Vermin Supremes out winning states, right? I don't know. All right, guys, <laughs> on to the best story of the week. I'm so excited. 18-year-old arrested for, t for pretending to be a doctor. Police say. Malachi, they say you've been practicing medicine without a license. Only our cameras were there when detectives arrested 18-year-old Malachi Love Robinson for practicing medicine without a license, allegedly giving a physical exam to a female undercover officer. An 18-year-old man, an official say, was posing as a medical doctor, posted bail, and walked out of the Palm Beach County Jail on Wednesday, according to the Palm Beach. Sheriff's deputies in West Palm Beach, Florida, arrested Malachi Love Robinson on Tuesday afternoon and accused him of practicing medicine without a license. He was the head of his own practice, according to the website. The sheriff's narcotics unit, along with the Florida Department of Health, carried out the operation in which an undercover officer visited Love Robinson's office, according to a statement from the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. Love Robinson physically examined the officer and provided medical advice, said the statement, which, detain which detailed a nearly two-week investigation um crap i don't have a statement hang on i'm gonna need to find this statement 
that uh, culminated in Tuesday's arrest. As police led Love Robinson out of the uh, of his office in handcuffs, he said, I'm hurt because of the accusations and allegations, but like I said, this is not the time where I've been accused. This is not the first time I've been accused, and I will pursue this, and when I do, I will let you guys know. They say you examined a patient today. You will from my lawyer. We've been about This guy's amazing. <laughs> 18. He's a kid. But he's like, they say you examined a patient. You examined a patient today. You will hear from my lawyer. We've been investigating Love Robinson since early January when he held a grand opening party for his new West Palm Beach Medical Clinic. And some concerned family members called me and the health department, worried he was posing as a doctor. He told me then he wasn't. So you sat right in here and told me that you knew the difference between a doctor and not a doctor. And you said you're not a doctor, correct? These allegations and accusations will be cleared up and you will hear from my lawyer. But the sheriff's office and... Nice. <laughs> All he's saying is you'll hear from my lawyer. The health department says he was practicing medicine without a license and slapped him into handcuffs. You've been practicing medicine without a license according to these officials. That is per what they say. Oh my God, look at this. Look at this sheriff. Holy crap. This guy's decked out. Okay, so there's one guy on the right. He's acting completely normal. Um, he's just a fat uh, Cuban or something, and he's got his sheriff badge on. He's got, he's fine. The guy on the other side is wearing, like, a bulletproof vest full of ammo. He's got a hat on, and he's wearing a face mask so you can't see who he is. Like, that one, that guy's a terrorist. <laughs> this guy's like, oh, I don't know, I don't care. I'm just doing my job. The other guy's like, I gotta suit up. <laughs> Take in the 18 year old doctor. People that you know, believed in you, that thought you, know, you well, knew what you were talking about. I'm hurt because of the accusations and the allegations, but like I said, this is not the first time where I've been accused and I will pursue this. And when I do, you guys will know. You'll be the first to know, Ms. Parker. He is so, he is so official. I am so excited. Um, okay, let's see. If there's any uh, any more information on this article, because we're going to skip over. Love Robinson described himself as a well-rounded prof professional, with two Fs, according to his profile on healthgrades.com, which has been removed since his arrest. His listing says he is 25 years old. So let's head on over to his website. Um, this is not taken down yet. It is nbnlmedicalcenter.com. Stands for the New Birth, New Life, Medical Center, and Urgent Care, LLC. There's a picture of a palm tree. If you guys are not watching the video version, you are missing this. A picture of a palm tree. There's some people doing yoga on the front page. Appointment request. We typically have same-day appointment availability. Call for scheduling. Health insurance. We accept most public and private insurance plans. We all. How can you be set up to... If you're a fake doctor, how are you set up to accept insurance? I don't understand. All right, so we're going to click on over to staff. Meet the doctors. Here he is. He is on the front page. <laughs> He's on the page. He's the top of it. Dr. Malachi A. Love-Robinson, Ph.D. Ph. He, so he's claiming to be a Ph.D. Maybe it's not illegal to claim to be a Ph.D., right? He could say, I'm Dr. Malachi I'm not an MD. I never said I never said I was a medical doctor. I'm a doctor and I work at this medical center. <laughs> right? <clears throat> Bio. Are you guys ready? You might want to You might want to brace for this. <laughs> Dr. Malachi A. Love Robinson is a well-rounded professional that treats and cares for patients using a system of practice that bases treatment of physiological functions and abnormal conditions on natural laws governing the human body. Dr. Love Robinson utilizes physiological, psychological, and medical methods such as air, water, light, heat, earth, phototherapy, food, and herb therapy, psychotherapy, electrotherapy, physiotherapy, mechanotherapy, naturopathic corrections and manipulation, and natural methods or modalities, together with natural medicines, natural processed foods, and herbs, and nature's remedies. Okay! So he is on the front page um, as being the president, CEO, and founder of New Birth, New Life Medical Center and Urgent Care. He's also got two workers, Michelle Newsom and Sandra J. White. <laughs> 
Sandra J. White is the program director for all programs at NBNL Medical Center. Dr. White is also our implementation specialist. So I don't understand. He had a real office, and people were actually working for him. They're like, you look a little young. Oh, well, I'll take the job. How's he making money? He must be charging. I don't understand. So let's head on over um, and get some more information. Beach teenager arrested for posing as a doctor. Malachi Love Robinson now facing grand theft charges in a new and unrelated case. Police say the 18 year old not only presented himself as a doctor, but even went as far as opening his own medical office. NBC6 investigative reporter Willard Shepard here now with more on that. Willard. I can't get enough of these type of stories. I love guy pretending to be something stories, especially if they're 18. Remember that 16 or 15 year old kid that showed up? He suited up as a cop. He showed up at the cop's office and he said, yeah, I'm, um, I got transferred from the next town over uh, for today. And they gave him assignments <laughs> and he drove a cop car around. And I also love it when they pretend to be bus drivers. These guys have more get up and get them than uh, me and most people I know. Yeah, I, I'm going to just open a medical practice. They go, amazing. Well, Adam, this evening we've uncovered much more about what this young man was allegedly up to. Turns out he was just 17 when he formed the medical company he was using, and police say he was even making house calls. A Palm Beach County teen far too young to practice medicine nabbed. I don't know. They're really trying to they're really trying to hype this guy up as a bad guy. I think he's the best. Malachi Love Robinson, now charged with practicing medicine without a license and grand theft. At his residence today, he didn't have much to say. But police say, here at this office complex, behind this door, he dressed the part. Oh, took the vital nice door. Sign. His door is just a bunch of hearts. ...of an undercover officer and asked questions any real physician would. Police say even... How does he know everything? Did he just go to YouTube and be like, how to be a doctor? hired staff to help. Yeah, Oncologist to Alan that. Schultz uh, has his office in the same building, but had no idea what Love Robinson was answer. allegedly up to. Uh, I've heard of these things happening, uh, but you're right, I never thought it really would happen in this building. Our check of the state's business records this afternoon found that the New Birth Life Medical Center was started in November. I'm sure glad that this uh, organization has done all the research for me, checking up on the business records was active up and running a tip to the florida department of all right we're gonna click ahead and see if we can get any more information oh wait nope no more information except for what i'm already going to play you um which is all right here he is here's the guy he's walking up to uh, a podium everyone um first of all i would just like to simply say that on behalf of myself and my family um, we thank you for the concerns in the community about the accusations that have happened. Um, I just want to say that I am deeply saddened um, and a little disrespected uh, by some of the things that have come forth. Uh, but I will say that my attorneys uh, are working hard. They're working around the clock to make sure that this issue gets resolved in the best way possible. I would just simply ask that you please allow the attorneys to do Is their job. Is this real life? Um, you respect the... Is this real life? He's 18... He says he's got attorneys working around the clock. How rich is this kid? Um, sorry, I was eating nuts. Um, I don't know. This is crazy. This is amazing. And my family's privacy. And just please allow us to deal with this issue the way any f normal family would. And I would simply... I can't tell. Like, if he's running a joke, it's so amazing. <laughs> because he's just saying all the normal things that you would say if you were arrested. I feel saddened. My attorneys are working hard on this, and we will be able to clear this up. Please respect my privacy. That's the script of any time you get in trouble. I feel like he's just playing a joke uh, and making fun of the whole system. The accident, if you could please pray for us in this time that everything ah! has happened, that we get the truth out of it. And not only the truth, but we can shed some good light on some of the things that are happening in the community today. That we can shed a good light on some of the positive things that are happening and stop worrying about bashing someone and start lifting them up. Once again, I wanna thank everyone for their support, whether it was good or bad. Um, I've had some great supporters and I've had some people who have said some negative things, but everyone is entitled to their opinion. And once again, I am not upset and I respect the community for the concerns that they have. 
But once again, just please respect our wishes and allow our attorneys to, to do the best that they can to work on this case. Thank you so very much and have a great night. The chat says he's a doctor and he said ax in place of ask. Well, you know, you can't, you can't take the dedo <laughs> out of the doctor is what I always say. But he's trying his best to not, like, this kid could be out on the streets shooting up basketballs, shooting up uh, kids, beating people. No. He started a business and he wants to be a doctor, and that's what he did. Right? There's way more corrupt real doctors than uh, this one guy. There's real doctors out there making money off fake prescriptions. Fake cancer diagnoses. Oh, you've got cancer. Um, you're gonna have to spend a couple hundred thousand dollars and sit in this chemo chamber. This guy's like, yeah, I want to be a doctor and uh, I have a practice already, <laughs> and I'm 18. He should be the C he should be the CEO of some. Well, he is the CEO of his company. He should be hired. I don't know. He should get a free scholarship to a medical college. Uh oh, hang on, the cat's dying. I think the cat might actually be dying. What do I do? Wait, is it breathing? Is it still breathing? Are you breathing? It didn't throw up. Yet. Yeah. Hopefully, I'm going to edit this part out. <laughs> yes? Are you, are you dead? No, he seems fine. I think he was just having a quick seizure. I don't know. Maybe he had the hiccups? That was weird. <laughs> Boo! Okay, I need to know how to, I need to know where to edit out the cat dying part. All right, sorry about that, folks. We are back from the cat dying. Um, it was just having a seizure, I think, <laughs> or had the hiccups. It didn't throw up. I was expecting it to throw up all over the bed. That did not happen, so that's good news. Oh, God, the cat's dying again. God damn it. Okay. It's very distracting to have the cat dying behind me. What What do you do if it's just going... <coughs> like, if it's... You can't call... Oh, God, cat's going to throw up. Yep, we got cat throwing up. Hang on. I got to use socks. I got to use socks. I got, I got paper towels. Oh, God. No, it's not throwing up now. Will you throw up already or, or do something? Here, here's a trash can. Throw up in that. Please. We'll just throw up and get it over with? This is like a ticking time cat. Yes, throw up in the... No, don't throw up in the... No, don't! Ah! Are you throwing up or not? Yes, throw up right there. That's good. That's perfect. Hang on. Oh, my God. No. Yes. I have, I have newspaper. Throw up in this. All right, everything seems fine. Um, <laughs> I don't know. The cat didn't throw up, but it also ran out of the room, and now it's downstairs. So if it throws up downstairs, fine. There's no carpeting down there. It's just like rock. Okay, we're going to take a quick break because I'm going to refill my coffee after that. And uh, so we will be back in like four or something. Actually, you know what? Let's finish. No, this is the end of the story. This is the end of the 18-year-old uh, doctor story. So we're going to take a quick break. Um, just chill out for like four minutes.
Oh, by the way, I can't edit that out of the video version, so that's going up as is. <laughs> what just happened? Okay, my coffee is getting brewed, um, so we're going to just wait for that. It'll take a second, and then we'll be back. Sorry, thank you for hanging out, all six chatters. Anonymous 2131, please chat. Will there be a regular show today? Yes. Um, it will be around 6 p.m. Eastern, I believe. I'm hoping, I'm trying to get, like I've said, I'm trying to get a guest. Uh, if we can't get the guest... I don't know. I'm willing to put off the show slightly for the guest, but hopefully it wouldn't be later than 6, 6.30 Eastern. I know that's like middle of the night for Espresso D, <laughs> I think. But if we do get the guest, it's going to be worth, I think. But I always think my guests are worth. But when they say maybe, it's almost never. It's almost never yes. It's a good, it's an okay day out, I guess. I don't know. And. Oh, the anonymous chatter's left. That's nice. I think anonymous was me on another device. Oh, okay. Earlier we had, um, what was it? Adult missing report search person. Missing adult report was in the chat or something. Don't know what happened to that guy. I'm sure it's one of you guys has logged in on another account. Okay, I'm going to go grab my coffee and we'll get back to the news.
Okay, we are back for real this time. That was a break to um, see if the cat was going to throw up. It didn't, that I know of. If it did, that sucks, if, especially if I don't know of it. But everything seems to be okay. Um, now it's just sitting downstairs, and it seems completely fine. I don't know. Maybe it's one of those wake-up things. You know how you wake up and you have to throw up? Or I guess cats get cat balls, right? <laughs> hair balls? I wonder what the difference is between a hair ball and throwing up. Who knows? Maybe just choking on a hairball. On to the news. Well, we were doing the news the whole show. Royal Caribbean apologizes to Anthem ship passengers battered by storm. Oh, my God. The 12-hour nightmare finally coming to an end for rattled passengers aboard Royal Caribbean's Anthem of the Seas cruise ship. Free at last! Free at last! I at one point thought I wasn't going to see my family again. That boat never should have gone out. The massive vessel arriving back in New Jersey overnight after encountering a ferocious Atlantic storm off the coast of the Carolinas just three days into its trip to the Bahamas. It's 30 foot waves like the whole ship was on a 45 degree angle for like we're talking like four or five hours. Windows smashed and Yikes. chairs toppled oh. over. And oh my god look at this wing. Terrified motion sick passengers hunkered down in their rooms as the captain battled the monstrous waves and 125 mile per hour winds. All that I'm so nervous. It was crazy man you know I mean everything fell out of the, out of the bathroom bro. Crash, crash, crash. Many criticizing the captain and cruise liner's decision to set sail despite the storm warnings. What was to be a seven-day cruise from New Jersey to the Bahamas and back came to an early end Wednesday after with a massive, with the massive anthem of the seas back in port. Three days after enduring a wild ride in rough seas fired up by 125 mile per hour winds, the battered Royal Caribbean ship and its 6,000 people aboard docked in New Jersey. Probably the same dock I took out of years ago. Royal Caribbean, facing scrutiny after the ship sailed into a storm, apologizes to passengers in a statement sent shortly be before the ship docked, saying, We have to do better. For roughly 12 hours, passengers of the Anthem of the Seas had hunkered down in their room Sunday as the captain of the cruise ship battled rough seas off Cape North Carolina. It was horrendous. At one point, I thought I wasn't going to see my family again. I held on to the mattress so I wouldn't fall off the bed. She said it was her first and last cruise. That boat never should have gone out. Royal Caribbean said the ship suffered superficial damage to some public areas and cabins, but had been repaired and would be out on its scheduled itinerary next week. This cruise line said the storm that the ship encountered was much, much worse than predicted. So let's head on over. Let's get some more information on this. The cruise ship went out, spent uh, two and a half days-ish fine, and then hit a storm. So being the good reporter that I am, I headed on over to cruisecritic.com. Cruisecritic.com is a site for cruise critics, and they post on their forums. And for the most part, I was reading through the posts on uh, this Anthem story, and, well, by the way, by the time I got there, they were tired of it. So if there's a thread about the Anthem story uh, with the storm, people are like, oh, this again? Because <laughs> they want to be there. They want to be talking about their cruises. They just want to be like, yeah, we went out Monday, had a great breakfast, went out Tuesday, had a great lunch, went out Wednesday, uh, went to the pool. Really great. Cruisecritic.com. They want to be talking cruises. They don't want to be talking this hype that the news hypes up. Anyway, if you go over there, they're actually pretty forgiving to the situation like i guess i guess being on cruisecritic.com means you're more like in the cruising industry and they understand they understand the decision makers like and how you decide whether or not you're going to sail and where you're going to sail and apparently they made a decision to sail but the storm ended up being worse than it was supposed to be and that's like a once in what once in a hundred times that you don't get the thing right obviously they're not going to sail into a storm on purpose <laughs> right if if the ship takes storm damage that's costing them i mean it's not costing them much because their labor is like two dollars an hour because they don't use americans but still uh here's a video okay you're not going to be able to see much on the audio version here so we got all right let's skip ahead oh, okay here's some so they're look they're uh, shooting outside. 
The gates From are the storm. The gates are broken. They tried to keep the water out. There are just towels everywhere. Pretty squishy. Some of the rails are. It's like, um, we had a storm and it rained. Let's just get every single towel on board and then just put them in a hallway to try to soak up the water. Broken. These huge. Oh, and there's a huge, like, you know, those pots they put in the hallways of hospitals? Uh, it's a huge vase with a plant in it. It apparently is tipped over. Oh, here's a here's a picture of, like, the lobby. Every chair tipped over. Another vase broken. Um, okay, so heading over to cruisecritic.com, I found a posting some from someone that was on the ship. I sat for a while and watched the weather while waiting and hoping that the hot tubs would die down as they were packed. Eventually, the ship got so rocky that everyone in them, meaning the hot tubs, was getting sloshed back and forth. They were having a blast. <laughs> but I sat there wondering why the crew had not closed them down yet. I then had to relocate as the water was splashing out of the hot tubs right over my head. Unfortunately, I had to wait a while to be able to move to higher ground in the solarium as the pools were overflowing and flooding the stairs. Now, at one point during the last cruise I took, I took video of the ship rocking and some water spilling out of the hot tub, and I was like, wow, this is crazy, guys. It's really windy and rocky. Uh, and it was pretty windy. They actually closed the deck because of the winds. But um, compared to this, that was like 1% <laughs> of this. So if you're in the hot tub and you're like, wow, that's just pretty fun, which actually would be kind of fun, right? You're getting just thrown around in the hot tub. Now it's a hot tub wave pool. The wine glasses behind the bar began to roll away. Several of them fell while passengers tried to catch them. With my drink in hand, I headed back to my chair with the intent of staying put due to the rough seas. The ship began to rock so much that myself and other passengers nearby were all looking at each other, somewhat worried. And I was beginning to hold, I was almost holding on to my chair. Several times the ship listed to port side, giving me a pretty clear view of the massive waves. The lady beside me commented, Well, this was fun for a while, but not so much anymore. Um, so that is the story. I didn't, I didn't obviously take the whole story from Cruise Critic. I did read it. So actually, let's see if I can, let's see if I can find the story. Uh oh, this is going to take a second. Click on to Anthem of the Seas. Click on over to page four. Or is it five? Who knows? During this time, the minibar items that... Okay, so basically, they... Um, ship starts getting rocky. They go, go back to your cabins. Go back to your... So everyone's gotten back to their cabins. At this point, it's like everyone's just locked in your cabin. You just have to ride out the storm. During this time, the minibar items that were on the top shelf of the desk flew off the desk, making horribly loud noises and rolling around the room. I attempted to pick up what I could find and put them back in the drawer, but I knew I was missing a few cans. Um, let's see. A sliding noise, followed by a loud crashing shatter in the washroom. I immediately knew what had happened. The glasses had fallen from the shelf. I was worried about that, but for some reason I hadn't thought to put them away anywhere. So basically the hotel, what would be hotel glasses, are now sliding and crashing all over the place. At 10.20 p.m., my cabin attendant came by once again to drop off some bottles of water. So the cabin attendant, who's an employee of the ship, is just walking around uh, giving, like, food. Because th if you're locked in your cabin, you can't get food. So they're, like, bringing Pringles and waters around to every cabin during the storm. Seas eventually calmed down. The ship turned back south at around 1.30 a.m., and I was finally able to fall asleep around 3 a.m. after watching chev several more movies. So... I don't know. Not that exciting. I mean, I, I'm sure it was pretty exciting, but it's not like it's not like they sailed out and were in a storm for three days. It was about 12 hours of storm. Did some damage to the ship, so they did turn around, which sucks. I'm not exactly sure what happens at that point because you paid for the cruise. I assume maybe you get your cruise back. You get at least some credit. But then what if you took a flight to get to the cruise? Like, that's not credited. I think I think you're just out of luck. Um, I think that's how life works. You can get this thing called vacation insurance. It's a real thing that you insure your vacation, and if something happens to ruin it or you have to cancel it, you get your money back. But I don't know. Um, so that was exciting. 
cruise ship in the storm. All right, we're going to move on to the uh, boop, boop, boop. We're going to move on to the lightning round, I suppose. You know what? That's an old story. We're going to move on to the lightning round and try to finish up the show here. Catholic seminary student arrested after arranging to rape infants. A priest in training seeks sex with infants. An Ohio man studying to be a priest was arrested in San Diego last week, accused of trying to pay to rape a one-year-old baby and a four-year-old girl. Joel Wright, 23-year-old priest in training, um, flew across the United States on Friday with plans to travel to Mexico to have sex with at least three babies. What the heck? Let's check this out. Oh! <clears throat> Hang on, I'm going to pull this onto the live screen. Uh, so here's what Joel Wright looks like. Um, I'm not sure. Chat, please, like, let me know what words I should use for the audio version of the show. He looks like... Boy. His ears aren't even the same size. Like, that's how... That's what we're dealing with here. He's very fat. I think his eyes are almost fattened closed. 23-year-old man who is studying to be a priest in Ohio seminary is accused of trying to pay to rape a one-year-old baby and a four-year-old girl. Joel Wright was arrested Friday by U.S. Immigration and Customs for in San Diego. Wright had previously tried to adopt a baby from Mexico. <gasps> um, <laughs> he is charged with traveling with the intent to engage in a sexual... This is not very lightning roundy of me, but that's okay. He is charged with traveling to engage with intent to engage in a sexual act. This investigation opens a window into a secret world where sexual predators prey on young children around the globe. Pedophiles who mistakenly believe that they can escape justice by committing child sex crimes outside the United States should be on notice. That HSI will seek to vindicate the rights of those victims. Okay. Uh, let's scroll down. <coughs> Here are five facts we need to know about Joel Wright. Wright said he wanted to adopt a baby girl, and I want to have intercourse with her after I own her. On January 14, 2016, Wright emailed the RP. I wonder what the RP is. Saying, I want to adopt slash own a baby girl. I want to have intercourse with her after I own her, but don't be telling people that. I can come next Thursday, but I won't pay until I have seen the baby, and I will pay the parents then. The cheapest baby girl under three would be good, and call me by the name Francis. What? Pope Francis? The cheapest baby <laughs> under three? <laughs> oh my goodness. So Brett Spessler G says his face is very small compared to the rest of his head. That's a good point. Yeah, like imagine a head and then you've taken the eyes, the mouth, and the mouth and you've like pulled them toward the center. <laughs> right? Yikes. Oh my goodness. He looks a little retarded. Yes, he does. Okay, <laughs> federal authorities were... I'm sorry, this is not lightning roundy. This guy just got way more interesting because I found this article and uh, with cutouts from things he've sa he's said. Federal authorities were tipped off about right in November 2015 from a Tijuana, Mexico resident who had responded to an advertisement on Craigslist soliciting the adoption of infants. <sighs> on Craigslist? Hello, I would like to adopt your baby. Thank you. The ad had allegedly been posted by Wright. The tipster told ICE agents he had lied to Wright and told him he could help him adopt a child. They first met in July 2014. Hang on a sec. When Wright traveled to Tijuana and paid him money as an adoption fee. So federal authorities were tipped off in November 2015, but they first met in July 2014. That's a lot of months to not tell the government, hey, I'm involved in a fake adoption scheme. Something else is going on with this second person. I think that Maybe this second person does adopt out babies. <coughs> he told Wright he was going to leave to get the child, but then never came back. In July 2015, the man responded to another Craigslist ad posted by Wright. Oh, my God. So several months later, he's like, well, that last adoption scheme didn't work. I'm going to try again. In which he was seeking a female travel guide. Oh, sorry. Wasn't, a, wasn't an adoption thing. 
The conversation started with Wright saying he wanted to travel to Tijuana for a medical appointment, meet a woman to marry, and then adopt a child, but shifted to his desire to engage in illicit sexual acts with female infants. The tipster asked him if he had sexual experience with infants, and Wright replied, I have not gone all the way before, but I have made it very close in the past, so I do have ex- What does that even mean? What does that even mean? So I do have experience. I've not gone all the way, but I've made it very close. What? Oh, here's the whole criminal complaint we can read. Um, I'm not sure how to do it. Oh, here we go. We just scroll here. Um, this is going to be too much. You know, I do love, oh, RP, guys, stands for reporting person. So if you ever hear that, now we know. I don't have time. I do like to read these criminal complaints so I can get you guys information. But we do not have time to read it on the show. So you can go find that, uh, the criminal complaint against Joel Alexander Wright. Okay, let's read some more of the things he said. Undercover agents took over the man's email account in December 2015, the man being the reporting person, I believe with his consent, and began communicating with Wright. In those emails, the agent said Wright began explicitly discount discussing his plans for the children he hoped to adopt. They set up plans for him to travel to Mexico, but Wright backed out. Um, and he says, <laughs> Espresso D says maybe he made it as a second base. I don't know what that means. With fear with a baby. Well, I don't want to picture it. I mean, I do want to picture it, but <laughs> just for scientific purposes. With the four-year-old, I think I will spank her a while to warm her up and make her a little angry so we can chase her around the place and I will pen it <gasps> and I will penetrate her very hard, which will be fun. And if she is angry at me, she will be even... Is he writing this? Because this is spelled perfectly, by the way. Like, if this is an Anthony Harvey type fellow, <laughs> he's not, he's not going to be writing this well. Or maybe the... Maybe the federal government, when they wrote up the complaint, fixed his spelling. Okay, going back. I will penetrate her very hard, which will be fun. And if she is angry at me, then she'll be even more fun because she'll probably try to get away, and it is so much for fun when it is a bit of a struggle. What do you think? Question mark. In January, Wright allegedly posted another ad and again was contacted by ICE's informant. Wright emailed him and said, I want to adopt slash own a bait. We already read this part own a baby girl and I want to have intercourse with her after I own her but don't be telling people that he then told the informant to call him Francis that was all number one it says five things we need to know that was all number one that we just did okay hang on two, uh, two is very short number two says he was arrested with two thousand dollars in cash baby clothes and a bottle in his luggage oh, it's not illegal to buy a bunch of baby clothes <laughs> Right, flew to San Diego on January 28th, and he was arrested at a baggage claim area with a cell phone and a duffel bag. Uh, he was arrested $2,000 in cash along with baby clothes. He had previously told an undercover agent he bought a pretty outfit, which I think should fit a one- or two-year-old. Hey, Harvey, I know you would never do that. That's not what I was saying. You're a very nice man. Um, what I'm saying is, if this man has spelling, like, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> A. Harvey's in the chat going, what are you talking about? An A. Harvey type man. He is no longer a student at uh, Ohio Seminary where he was studying. At 11, investigators say hours after he walked away from the Josephine this morning, Joel Wright was arrested for trying to buy children for sex. Good evening. I'm Mike Jackson. And I'm Ellie Merritt. Disturbing details coming out of the... Jackson? I think he's in on it too. This investigation, Wright is accused of trying to get kids as young as a year old. Investigators got a tip that he was planning a trip to Tijuana to adopt a child. And today, he didn't make it that far. Federal agents intercepted him at the airport in San Diego. NBC4's Dan Perlman went through those court documents and is in the newsroom now with what he found out about Joel Wright. Dan you know what? I'm not going to let this guy take my thunder. He's a reporter. I'm a reporter. We are not doing that, sir. Oh, guys, we're at number four, and we've uh, uncovered our problem. He was born with a glaucoma and won an award for his efforts to raise awareness about the condition. What's glaucoma? Is that like a mental issue or just a physical issue? Let's Google it. 
Um, wait a minute. Glo- with all types of glaucoma. Oh God. This is horrible audio. Glaucoma is a group of eye disease in which result in damage to the optic nerve and vision loss. Oh. I mean, he did say he wanted to see the baby first, though. So, what the heck? <laughs> Who cares? He has glaucoma. Number five. Wright's mother said he doesn't believe the ch- says she doesn't believe the charges. Wright's mother told the Associated Press she doesn't believe the allegations. She lives in Vermont, and she, she could not comment further. Beds. Ohio clergy student arrested for seeking sex. Oh wait, I'm in a. I went in a circle with this stupid thing. Uh, blah 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 blah. I'm trying to find the quote from his mom, but I can't find it. Okay, so that's it. Um, I don't know. He went. He almost went all the way. I think that was a lie, probably. Like, if you're trying to sound cool online to your um, you're trying to do some like baby stuff, right, over the border. You're talking to someone. And they're like, "Yeah, I got some babies for you. You have any experience?" You're not gonna be like, "No, I don't." <laughs> You're gonna be like, "Yeah, I kind of do." You want to sound cool, at least. All right, that was a great lightning round. First story, guys. Moro Bay Burger King suffers thirty-five thousand dollars in damages. A Moro Bay Burger King is expected to reopen Tuesday morning at. 6:30. After police say a prank call about a also in Morro Bay, a, a prank call about a fake gas leak apparently prompted employees to smash all the windows. <laughs> On Monday, workers were repairing an estimated thirty-five thousand dollars worth of damages at the Burger King. According to police, employees received a call on Saturday night from someone pretending to be from the fire department, telling them to ventilate the business. That there was a gas leak. Ventilate the business immediately. There's a gas leak, please. Oh, it's leaking. How would the hey? How would the fire department? What do they think? They have sensors everywhere, and there's no alarm inside the building, but it alarms at the fire department, and then the fire department has to call you and say there's a gas leak. Whatever. <coughs> Pretending to be from the fire department, telling them to ventilate the business. That prompted employees to smash the windows. Okay. Uh, they say there's a gas leak and we're all going to die. Smash the windows. <laughs> They're throwing the stupid stools through. A manager on duty. Okay, guys. Burger King manager. Probably not your top of the line manager. It's just the teenager that happened to stick around the longest at Burger King, which means he's actually the dumbest employee. The longer you stay, the dumber you are. It means the managers are mathematically the dumbest <laughs> at these fast food restaurants. A manager on duty went outside and used his car to ram into the building. (coughs) I'm joking. (coughs) Oh, God, I'm the cat now. (coughs) I don't know what happened. Um, There's no picture of the car having been crashed into the building, unfortunately. But (coughs) he decided that to ventilate the building, the best plan of action was to drive his car <laughs> through the wall. Okay. <coughs> Porn film accidentally shown at funeral service for father and baby son. Candif, uh, an investigation has been launched. Why are investigations always launched? Uh, we're looking into it. We've launched an investigation. That's what I always say if someone doesn't know what happened. I'm like... What happened here? Like, I don't know. I don't well, you better launch an investigation. I want <laughs> I want your lawyers working around the clock on this one to clear up these allegations. An investigation has been launched after a pornographic film was accidentally shown during the funeral of a father and his baby son. Hundreds of people had gathered at the council-run Thornhill Crematorium in Cardiff. These sound like uh, overseas things. Espresso D, is this from your country? Cardiff to pay their respects to the pair who were killed following a car crash. Mourners were shocked when one screen began to show a pornographic video instead of a tribute to the father. Oh no, no! So it's a kid. So it's a guy who was working on the video last night, right? He's like, he's working at home. He's exporting the file. He's burning it to DVD. Takes the DVD out of the computer, and then he puts it next to his other burned DVDs. And then in the morning, he's like, oh, which one was the funeral? thing is probably this one right he takes the dvd brings it to church 
Um, puts it in. Yikes. A spokesman said the council has forwarded a written apology to the family as carrying out an urgent investigation. There were s four television screens used to display visual tributes as part of the funeral service. The television screen showed the inappropriate content was recently installed, replacing a screen which was broken. Oh. So is he trying to imply that we were trying to establish if the new screen, which is a smart television, could have accepted or picked up a broadcast by accident via Bluetooth or across a Wi-Fi network. <gasps> oh, that's hilarious. So someone had their Chromecast hooked up to the new TV or whatever <laughs> and was streaming to it. Man, how embarrassing. You work for the council and then you're, um, I bet you what happened. Let's, let's scrap the DVD uh, theory. Probably what happened was some stupid worker was in there late the night before hooked up his phone or his iPad or something to the smart TV to watch some of that porn in the main room, right? He's alone. He hooks it up, watches it, forgets to change the channel or whatever, leaves it running. When the TV turns on again, it just picks up the video from where it left off. Uh, let's see. The other three screens which aren't smart TVs were unaffected. We are clear that this isn't possible for any member of the staff to play or download anything on the computer that links to the screens in the chapel. Yep, I don't know what you're saying there. <laughs> you, are cl you are clear that it isn't possible? I'm sure it is possible. The screen has now been completely disconnected until audiovisual engineers carry out a thorough investigation. We'd like to take this opportunity to send our sincere apologies to the family. If you're the guy that did this, you probably know you did it. And you're like, ooh, I hope those audiovisual engineers don't uh, catch me in their investigation. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that happened. That was the end of the lightning round, and that is the end of News with Nick. Do you guys want me to pull up an uplifting news story? Because I don't know how. Actually, I do know how. You just go to the uplifting news section. I'll just click one, and uh, hopefully it's a lady throwing a basketball into a thing. Teen swimmer finishes first, gives medal to the real winner. Don't know what this is going to be, but let's find out. In a symbolic display of sportsmanship rarely seen at any level of competition, Metuchen swimmer Michael Spark handed his first place medal to a competitor, Latvian-born Rich Fordles of Monroe. I felt like it was the right thing to do because... I got beat fair and square. In the GMC Swimming Championships, not only did Fordles finish ahead of Spark by more than two seconds in the 100 backstroke, he shattered a 14-year-old meet record, only to beat... This is the boringest announcer on earth, but let's find out why the kid that won didn't truly win, and the other guy won, but then he gave his medal away. Let's find out. I'm on the edge of my seat. DQ'd in the event for wearing an illegal swim cap one that offered no competitive advantage. It would make sense if the cap would make me faster, but the cap didn't make faster, it was just a logo. The cap wasn't uh, enhancing his performance in any way. He beat me because he trains harder than me, because he trained harder than me. He just outswam me. He beat me that day in that race. Fordles, who has lived in the United States for only a year, was unaware of the rule and wore his petty club team cap during the event. There. Okay, that is the news. So a kid wore a... Logo cap was disqualified because he broke the rules, still won. The guy who got the medal handed it over to him. Uh, that's uh, the uplifting news for the day. Who freaking cares, right? Um, I guess that's nice, right? All right, anyone, everyone, we are going to be, I need to uh, turn off the thing because I need to export this, send it out to the thing, uh, upload the video version, and we need to be heading out so that we can do a show tonight, hopefully with a guest, but I don't want to plug anything because it probably won't happen. Thank you for coming out. I know it was only one viewer originally, but we've got plenty of viewers coming out to the chat. Hopefully you enjoyed the video version of News with Nick, and you are all caught up on Apple's, Scalia's, um, and 18-year-old doctors. Man, that is the best story ever. <laughs> a Harvey says, porn at furinoler. Porn at furinoel. Not good. No, it isn't good. All right, guys, we'll be live later on tonight. So check your Facebooks for the actual time or just subscribe to the Ustream so that you get an alert and you can go, Mom, Dad, I'm sorry that we're eating dinner. I got to go watch Puke in the Gang. Okay, bye. <laughs>